Number 10, Brendan Fraser. Canadian treasure Brendan Fraser got his big break after auditioning for a film in his early 20s as a way to make some money before going off to college. And he never made it to school. Instead, he was picked up by an agent launching his career. Brendan appeared in several blockbuster hits between 1990 and 2015, like Journey to the Center of the Earth, The Mummy, and of course, my personal favorite, Looney Tunes Back in Action. This is a great movie. It's so unhinged. They really got to give it more, you know, it needs to be in theaters again. Suddenly, around the mid 2010s, Brendan appeared to vanish from Hollywood entirely and only appeared in small roles in indie flicks or on TV shows, like when he played Robot Man in DC's Doom Patrol. As we now know, Brennan's seclusion was the result of poor mental health following an altercation with the former president of the Hollywood Foreign Press, Philip Burke, in which Burke touched Brennan inappropriately and without consent. This, on top of a lengthy divorce, left Brennan penniless and depressed. Thankfully, though, this story does have a happy ending, as not only did he begin speaking out publicly about his experience, but thanks to his success and acceptance from the world, he was asked to audition for the role of Charlie in the Oscar-nominated movie The Whale, where he won an award for Best Actor in a Leading Role. I actually just saw that movie not long ago, and I think he deserved that Oscar 100%. Here's hoping that this is just the beginning of the next chapter in his Hollywood career, and that he'll make some of that money back. Number nine, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's been scaring kids and yelling about cooking since the late 1980s, starring in multiple critically acclaimed films like Beetlejuice, Hunt for Red October, and Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Now, over the past couple of years, Alec has been working on a little movie called Rust that hasn't been able to reveal a lot about its plot because of the situation surrounding Alec and one of its cinematographers, Helena Hutchins, because her life was accidentally taken from her after a prop pew-pew was used on set by Alec that contained live rounds instead of blanks like most props do. After a lengthy court battle, it was was determined that Alec and the prop master Hannah Reed would be charged with involuntary manslaughter. While the prop master pleaded guilty and accepted the charges, Alec fought back and was in a highly expensive and lengthy court battle that left him with just under three million dollars. That means he's poor for some reason. Thankfully for him, the court recently informed him that the charges were going to be dropped and the situation prompted a discourse on occupational safety in the film industry and the treatment of its employees and the use of real fire pew pews as props on set. He is being suit again, but that's only going to put him further into the hole that he's already in. Number eight, Nicolas Cage. Nick is just one of those celebrities that you can't put your finger on. Is he good? Is he bad? Is he actually a vampire? Probably. The answer to these questions will be debated until the end of time. At one point in his career, the answer seemed to be he's good, as in 2009 alone, he made over $40 million starring in the crime drama Bad Lieutenant and the hit sci-fi thriller Knowing, alongside Rose Byrne and Liam Hemsworth. Nick's tale of woe is self-inflicted as this man took every penny he made and used it for fun stuff. He bought horses, mansions, cars, even rare historical artifacts that surprisingly don't include the Declaration of Independence because that would be too on the nose. Unless he stole it and didn't tell anybody about it because that would make sense. By the end of the 2000s, Nick saw no money in his pocket and he was forced to sell several of his shiny new things that he had just purchased and he actually owes the IRS over six million dollars. His career is still going strong and has even begun to take a tick upward. The critical success of the new dark comedy Renfield in which he plays the Prince of Darkness himself, Dracula, not to mention the 10 other movies that are coming out this year. But despite that work, he has taken a significant pay decrease and he has remained in the red this day. Number seven, Lonnie Willison. Lonnie was a model in the early 2000s, appearing on the cover of several health and fitness magazines like Glam Fit, Flavor, and Iron Man, not the movie. In 2018, she was spotted living on the streets of LA after years of being hidden from the public eye following her divorce former Baywatch star, Jeremy Jackson. Lonnie alleges that an altercation took place one night when they had been indulging in some adult beverages in which Jackson attempted to lay his hands on Lonnie. The violent altercation left her shaken and in need of somewhere to go. Unfortunately, the divorce from Jackson left her with basically nothing, which seems to have forced her to live on the streets and scrounge for food. Recent photos show Lonnie with bruises on her hands from rummaging all day and she is unrecognizable in her attire. Thankfully, some justice was delivered when Jackson was kicked off of Celebrity Big Brother for exposing a fellow housemate's bare chest to the cameras. Subsequently, he was cancelled by the entirety of the UK and is out of work for the rest of his life. Here is hoping that this gives Lonnie the hope to break out of her situation and return to that glam fit status. Number 6, Mel B. Spice up your life and check out this next entry. Mel B is just one of the five women responsible for creating some of the most iconic pop songs of all time that we still love 
to dance to the moment they come on our speaker. The Spice Girls were a popular singing group from the UK formed in the early 90s and they quickly rose to fame with hits like Wannabe, Spice Up Your Life, and Say You'll Be There. You would think with all of that fame, there would certainly come fortune, right? Well, we've got one word for you: Divorce. She accumulated a massive net worth during her time with the crew. Unfortunately, the majority of that cash vanished when she was married to film producer Stephen Belafonte from 2007 to 2017. Final blow came when Mel officially cracked and filed for a divorce, and in court, her husband blamed Mel for the financial loss due to her extravagant and affluent lifestyle. Hey man, she's a Spice Girl. She's allowed to spend her money however she wants. Get back behind your desk and zip it. Her Spice Girl earnings originally sat around $50 million dollars, but currently she's sitting closer to six. It's still a lot of money, but it's certainly not what it could be and honestly should be. Number five, Billy Joel. He sung us a song as the piano man and his brother stole all of his cash. Billy Joel is a world famous musician behind some songs that are considered to be the greatest of all time. With hits like We Didn't Start the Fire and Piano Man, he has surely serenaded your heart over and over again, but despite his massive success, Billy's financial woes have been vast for a majority of his career. He's been forced to file for bankruptcy over three times throughout his life. While early on the issue stemmed from multiple messy divorces in which his personal funds were just essentially vacuumed away from him, his brother-in-law mismanaged his funds and stole money from Joel. All said and done, he ended up owing $9 million in fees and payments that resulted in him being forced to go on a world tour. Okay, he was forced to travel the world and sing for his fans. That sounds awful. Take my money. Number four, Mike Tyson. In 1997, Mike Mike Tyson stepped into the ring with fellow heavyweight boxer Evander Holyfield. Two parts took in a legendary battle that left Holyfield the champion and missing a part of his ear. That's because Mike had bitten it off in the middle of the fight completely out of nowhere. This was the first of many times that Mike would make headlines as his antics outside of the ring began to overshadow his skills as a fighter. Mike is just another man who made millions and wasted all of it having a good time really fast. At one point his net worth was like 400 million dollars but he spent it all because he struggled with impulse control issues Ugh. and spent his money on whatever caught his eye, including a gold chain for which he spent $173,000 on it in Las Vegas. His spending habits eventually left him with $23 million in credit card debt and taxes, forcing him to file for bankruptcy. Eventually, he was able to scrape together some cash and now he sits at a comfortable $10 million, which for some reason classifies him as poor. But hey, give me some of that money, man. Number three, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay is a jack of all trades. She acts, sings, dances, writes, and she's even the queen of her own business empire. Despite all this though, the former Disney star and Hollywood bad girl has a net worth of around $500,000. Why? Well, apparently she loves to take nice, long vacations constantly. Lohan was almost forced to declare bankruptcy a few years ago. As we all know, she fell out of the mainstream and started a very public battle with substance control. This left Lindsay in the low six figure range, which somehow again makes her poor. Like, hey man, I barely have $5 on a good day. Eventually she entered rehabilitation and kicked her bad habits right into oncoming traffic. And it wasn't until she posed for Playboy and opened up about her life on Oprah Winfrey's talk show that her finances started to stabilize and her career is slowly on the rise again. Here is hoping that a Freaky Friday sequel is on its way. Number two, Kanye West. Kanye is our go-to guy when it comes to controversial, universally despised celebrities and now poor people. Before 2020, Kanye was on the rise and he became a full-fledged billionaire thanks to his multiple businesses and successful music career. But things quickly took a turn for the worst when he basically had a mental breakdown on Twitter. He posted a series of homophobic and racially fueled tweets aimed at several orientations and races that left Kanye beyond broke. He was dropped by all clothing and shoe brands that carried his products like the Gap, Balenciaga, and of course Adidas, the heaviest of the blows. This combined with his production company putting a pause on any musical projects that he may have been undertaking caused him to go from being in the billions to the low hundred thousands in one single tweet. And of course, taking the top spot, number one, Donald Trump. The former president and human trash bag, Donald Trump, was recently returned to the news cycle in the best way possible because a little while back, following a long and strenuous investigation, it was revealed that Don was guilty of 37 counts of falsifying business documents and paying off his enemies to keep silent about his misdeeds. He paid Stormy Daniels to stay quiet about an affair. He paid off lawyers, reporters, so many people getting so much money from a man who was once considered to be the 
wealthiest real estate mogul in the entire United States. Well, Johnny didn't have a never-ending supply of cash and has officially gone bankrupt due to the court proceedings and fees that he is surely facing at the moment. Now, while it's not official just yet, Don has been teetering between broke and well-off since he was kicked out of the office. Hey, good luck in prison, Donnie. Invest in a cup of soup. It's a really hot commodity in there. Number 10, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay is a jack of all trades. She acts, sings, dances, writes, and is even the queen of her own business empire. Despite all of this though, the former Disney star and Hollywood bad girl has a net worth of just $500,000. Why? Well, apparently she loves to take nice long vacations, like all the time. Lohan was almost forced to declare bankruptcy a few years ago. As we all know, she fell out of the mainstream and began a very public battle with substance control issues. This left Lindsay in the low six figure range, which somehow makes her poor by Hollywood standards. Eventually, she entered rehabilitation and kicked her bad habits right into oncoming traffic. It wasn't until she posed for Playboy and opened up about her life on Oprah Winfrey's talk show that her finances began to stabilize and her career is slowly on the rise once again. Here's hoping to a Freaky Friday sequel. I check that out. Number nine, Brendan Fraser. Canadian treasure Brendan Fraser got his big break after auditioning for a film in his early 20s as a way to make some extra money before going off to college. He never made it to school though, and instead he was picked up by an agent launching his career. Brendan appeared in several blockbuster hits between 1990 and 2015, such as Journey to the Center of the Earth, The Mummy franchise, and my personal favorite, Looney Tunes Back in Action. This movie is so unhinged, please watch it. I love it. Suddenly around the mid 2010s, Brendan appeared to vanish from Hollywood entirely, only appearing in small roles in indie flicks or in TV shows like when he played Robot Man in DC's Doom Patrol. As we know now, Brendan's seclusion was the result of poor mental health following an altercation with the former president of the Hollywood foreign press, Philip Burke, in which Burke touched Brendan Fraser inappropriately and without consent. This on top of a lengthy divorce left Brendan penniless and depressed. Thankfully though, this story has a very happy ending as not only did he begin speaking out publicly about his experience, but thanks to his success and acceptance from the world, he was asked to audition for the role of leading man Charlie in the Oscar nominated film The Whale, for which he won the award for best actor in a leading role. Here's hoping that this is just the beginning of the next chapter of his long Hollywood career. Number 8, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's been scaring kids and yelling about cookies since the late 1980s, starring in multiple critically acclaimed films like Beetlejuice, Hunt for Red October, and Glengarry Glen Ross. Over the past couple of years, Alec has been working on a little movie called Rust that hasn't really been able to reveal too much about its plot due to the situation surrounding Alec and one of its cinematographers, Helena Hudgens. Her life was accidentally taken from her after a firearm was used on set by Alec that contained live rounds instead of blanks like most prop firearms are supposed to. After a lengthy court battle, it was determined that Alec and the prop master Hannah Reed would be charged with involuntary manslaughter. While the prop master pleaded guilty and accepted the charges, Alec fought back and was in a highly expensive and lengthy court battle that has left him with just under $3 million. Thankfully for him, the court recently informed him that the charges were being dropped as the situation prompted a discourse on occupational safety in the film industry, the treatment of its employees, and the use of real firearms as props on set. Number 7, Nick Cage. Nick is one of those celebrities that you just can't put your finger on. Is he good? Is he bad? Is he a vampire? Who knows? The answer to these questions will be debated until the end of time. At one point in his career, the answer seemed to be good, as in 2009 alone, he made over $40 million, starring in crime drama Bad Lieutenant and the hit sci-fi thriller Knowing, alongside Rose Byrne and Liam Hemsworth. Nick's tale of woe is self-inflicted, as this man took every penny he made and used it for fun stuff. He bought horses, mansions, cars, even rare historical artifacts that surprisingly do not include the Declaration of Independence. Unless he like stole it or something and just didn't tell anybody about it, that would not be surprising. By the end of the 2000s, Nick saw no money in his pockets. He was forced to sell several of his shiny new things that he just purchased, and he actually owed the IRS over $6 million. His career is still going strong, and he has even begun to take a tip upward with the critical success of his new dark comedy, Renfield, in which he plays the Prince of Darkness himself, Dracula. Such a fun movie, literally, go watch it. Despite the work, he has taken a significant pay decrease and has remained in the red to this day. Number six, Lonnie Willison. Lonnie was a model in the early 2000s, appearing on the cover of several health and fitness magazines such as Glam Fit, Glamour, and Iron Man. In 2018, she was spotted living on the streets of LA after years of being hidden from the public eye following her divorce from former Baywatch star Jeremy Jackson. Lonnie alleges that an altercation took place one 
night when they had been indulging in some adult beverages, in which Jackson attempted to lay his hands on Lonnie. The violent altercation left her shaken and in need of somewhere to go. Unfortunately, the divorce from Jackson left her with basically nothing, which seems to have forced her to live on the streets and scrounge for food. Recent photos show Lonnie with bruises on her hands from rummaging all day, and she is unrecognizable in her attire. Thankfully, some justice was delivered when Jackson was kicked off of Celebrity Big Brother for exposing a fellow housemate's bare chest to the cameras. Subsequently, he was cancelled by the entire UK and is now out of work for the rest of his life. Here's hoping this gives Lonnie the hope to break out of her situation and return to that glam fit status. Number 5. Melanie B. Spice up your life and check out this next entry. Mel B was just one of the 5 women responsible for creating some of the most iconic pop songs of all time that they still love to dance to the moment it comes on our speakers. The Spice Girls were a popular singing group from the UK formed in the early 90s. They quickly rose to fame with hits like Wannabe, Spice Up Your Life, and Say You'll Be There. You would think that with all that fame, you would certainly come fortune, right? Well, we've got one word for you. Divorce. She accumulated a massive net worth during her time with the crew, but unfortunately the majority of that cash vanished while she was married to film producer Stephen Belafonte from 2007 to 2017. The final blow came when Mel officially cracked and filed for divorce. In court, her husband blamed Mel for the financial loss due to her extravagant and affluent lifestyle. Hey man, she's a spice girl. She's allowed to spend her money however she wants. Get back behind your desk and zip it. Her spice girl earnings originally sat at a wide whopping $50 million, but currently only sitting closer to six. It's still a lot of money, but certainly not what could and definitely should have been. Number four, Billy Joel. He sung us a song as the piano man and his brother stole all of his cash. Billy Joel is a world famous musician behind some of the songs that are considered to be the greatest of all time. With hits like We Didn't Start the Fire and Piano Man, he has surely serenaded your heart over and over again. But despite his massive success, Billy's financial woes have been vast for a majority of his career. He's been forced to file for bankruptcy over three times throughout his career, while early on the issue stemmed from multiple messy divorces, in which his personal funds were essentially vacuumed away from him, his brother-in-law mismanaged his funds and stole money from Joel. All said and done, he ended up owing nearly $9 million in fees and payments that resulted in him being forced to go on world tour. Yes, he was forced to travel the world and sing for his fans. Okay, that, yeah, that sounds dreadful. Number three, Mike Tyson. In 1997, Mike Tyson stepped into the ring with fellow heavyweight boxer Evander Holyfield. The two partook in a legendary battle that left Holyfield champion and missing part of his ear. That was because Mike had bitten it off in the middle of the fight, completely out of nowhere. This was the first of many times that Mikey would make headlines as his antics outside of the ring began to overshadow his skills as a fighter. Mike is another man who made millions and wasted it all having a good time really fast. At one point his net worth was $400 million, but he spent all of it as he struggled with impulse control issues. Duh! He spent his money on whatever caught his eye, including a gold chain, for which he spent $173,706 on in Las Vegas. His spending habits eventually left him with over $23 million in credit debt and taxes, forcing him to file for bankruptcy. Eventually, he was able to scrape together some cash and now sits at a comfortable $10 million, bucks, which for some reason is considered poor. Like, come on, get me some, man. Number two, Kanye West. Kanye is our go-to guy when it comes to controversial and universally despised celebrities. Before 2020, Kanye was on the rise and had become a full-fledged billionaire thanks to his multiple business ventures and successful music career. Things quickly took a turn for the worse when Kanye basically had a mental breakdown live on Twitter. He posted a series of homophobic and racially fueled tweets aimed at several orientations and races that left Kanye beyond broke. He was dropped by all clothing and shoe brands that carried his products, such as The Gap, Balenciaga, and of course, Adidas, the heaviest of the blows. This combined with his production company putting a pause on any musical projects that he had been undertaking caused him to go from being in the billions to the low, low hundreds of thousands in one single tweet. And at number one, Donald Trump. The former president and all-around human trash bag Donald Trump has recently returned to the news cycle in the best way possible, following a long and 
strenuous investigation, it was revealed that Donnie was guilty of 37 counts of falsifying business documents and paying off his enemies to keep silent about his misdeeds. He paid Stormy Daniels to stay quiet about an affair. He paid off lawyers, reporters, so many people getting so much money from a man who was once considered to be the wealthiest real estate mogul in the United States. While Donnie didn't have a never-ending supply of cash, and he has officially gone bankrupt due to the court proceedings and fees that he's surely going to face. While it's not official just yet, Don has been teetering between broke and well off since he was kicked out of the office. Good luck in prison, Donnie. Invest in cup of soups. I heard it's a hot commodity in there. Number 10, Billie Eilish. Billie is a talented artist and overall seems just like a stellar human being. She's been involved in many social media rumors and stories surrounding her physical attributes, her relationships, and her beliefs. Well, she shared with Conan O'Brien on the Conan Needs a Friend podcast that she deleted every social media app off her phone and just doesn't look online anymore at anything with her name or face attached to it. Considering that she grew up with and spent a lot of time on social media, she claimed that this was a massive move to her and made a big difference in her life. She told Conan that she felt like she grew up in the perfect world with social media. Her first experience was back when the internet was not so internet-y. She had a childhood where she was not glued to her screen, much like a lot of people are these days. It was computers and games on computers, but like barely. Then when she became a preteen, there were iPhones for the first time. And as she grew, so did the internet. She was excited to use it at first, but as time went on and her career grew, her relationship with the online world began to change. People can leave comments about anything online, so she was noticing a ton of hate being thrown her way for seemingly no reason. Because of that, she slowly started to wean herself off of social media platforms like X and Facebook. She said that she saw people who seemed to be in their right minds going online and just talking about how terrible of a person she was, when in reality, she seems like a pretty normal human being who just wants some privacy. Number nine, Tom Holland. In 2022, Tom Holland took to his Instagram to announce his official departure from the app, as well as Twitter. He decided to take a break for his mental health, as he finds those platforms just cause overstimulation and make him feel overwhelmed. Understandably, he gets caught up in a spiral when he reads things about himself online and ultimately it's detrimental to his mental health. So, deleting the apps and taking a step back just makes sense. Holland is a busy man, not just Spider-Man, but now he is his own Hollywood superstar. Tom is also the co-founder of the fundraising organization The Brothers Trust, which is a charity that supports other charities to help shed light on causes that might not be as universally known. The company created apps for people to use to keep themselves Calm and Collected. The four apps, Calm Harm, Clear Fear, Combined Minds, and Move Mood, are designed to help users with their mental health. Tom reminded people before taking his hiatus that asking for help and seeking help is not something to be ashamed of, but it is something that is much easier said than done. So hopefully those apps can be the first step towards being happier and healthier. Number eight, Taron Edgerton. Now let's just take a moment to appreciate this guy before I go any further. Taron is an incredible actor, and fun fact for anyone who has seen the first Kingsman movie, that was his first acting gig. Right out of school, he auditioned and got that role that would end up launching his career. Taron has been nominated for Oscars, he's played dozens of memorable characters, and last year he even got the chance to play his friend Elton John in a biopic about Elton John called Rocket Man. I just love Elton John because most people don't get a biopic when they're still alive, and he was like, nah, I'm not waiting, let's make this thing happen. Taron took to social media in June of this year, detailing his decision to step away from social media for the time being. He told his followers that he wasn't sure why he was making making such a big declaration about it, he just felt that it's hard to break away from a cycle that he has grown to find a bit addictive. And this was him making a commitment to himself. He actually acknowledged that he felt like his ability to sit and present and read books and watch movies and even seek out the company of the people that he actually loves was eroding as a result. In addition to how his social media use is impacting his time with loved ones, Edgerton noted that he felt a little removed from himself and it began impacting his overall career. With regards to work, he knows he's capable of more, and Instagram is just one of several impediments to getting him there. Good for Taron, here's hoping his career does nothing but continue to grow. Number 7, Selena Gomez. Selena is an interesting woman when it comes to social media, especially
especially. On Instagram alone, she has over 430 million followers who are constantly having to read about her leaving social media only for her to return a few days later at most. Most recently, she took a 16-hour break from social media after receiving some backlash over comments and views towards the situation in the Middle East. According to her, social media is just a way to deliver us the horror, the hate, the violence, and the terror that is going on in the world today. In a post from February this year, she told her fans that she'd be leaving her social media platforms once again after responding to rumors, alleging that a feud between herself and Hailey Bieber had grown. Rumors about these two have run rampant for years based on the simple fact that they did have one feud once that was publicly squashed a long time ago. She reminded her followers that negative comments of any kind can hurt anyone's feelings, and since February alone, she has returned to and left social media over and over again. As I said, she most recently announced that she would be leaving only to return 16 hours later like nothing happened. Number six, John Legend. John is a legend that's not just a fancy last name. This man has created some of the most instantly recognizable songs on the planet. All of me still rings in my skull when I see his face. It's happening right now. Earlier in his career, John was online all the time, but has mentioned that he is offline way more now than he once was. He told Yahoo Life that he mainly posted on Instagram and TikTok, but stopped posting on Twitter altogether as it started to become a little bit too toxic for his taste. After a while, having that much transparency between himself and his audience, not just coming from you, but also coming to you is just a little bit of a, it's a hassle. All the incoming discourse was a lot. After a while, he just decided that he didn't want to do that to himself or anyone else. He found it better for his mental health just to stay away, and he is one of the few people on this list who only slowed down their social media usage instead of actually abandoning it outright. So the move is a good one, though. He just wants to take control of his mental health, and leaving social media is probably the best way to do it. Number five. Chris Evans. Chris decided to deactivate his account altogether in 2023 for the simple reason that social media is a terrible place to spend your free time. <laughs> what a guest! In June of this year, Chris decided to deactivate his account without any warning or big speech, just no, nothing really specific that caused him to call it quits. His final post was a short and sweet one, seemingly responding to a fellow celebrity who called it quits. He wrote that he could not have said it better himself, count me in, I'm taking a break, much love everyone. A break was taken and Chris steered clear of any social media fun stuff for a while. I personally don't use social media, so I'm not sure if he has returned or not, but whatever he decided to do is probably the right move to make, because if Chris Evans says something is wrong, then hey, something is wrong. Number four, Aquafina. Now, people give this woman a lot of flack online, but considering the path that her career seems to be taking in the world, y'all need to take a break and chill. Starting out as a stand-up comedian, she got her big break when she was casted to be a sorority sister in Neighbors 2 and stole the show with every scene that she was in. Since then, she's become a part of the MCU, starred in Oscar-nominated movies, and has branched into the world of voice acting in so many ways. Well, in 2022, she told the world that she would be taking a break from social media till at least 2024. According to one final post on Twitter in February of 2022, her therapist suggested that she remove herself from any and all social media platforms. She wrote to her fans thanking them for their continued love and support and wishing that she can be a better person for the world. She apologized if she ever fell short in anything that she did. The hiatus came hours after sharing a statement regarding her use of a black scent and African American vernacular English in the early days of her career. She explained that as a person of color, she stands by the fact that she will always listen and work tirelessly to understand the history and context of AAVE and every marginalized group, but she has never meant to mock, belittle, or be unkind to anyone in any way in any fellow human being. Number three, Camila Cabello. The Havana Unana singer announced in 2021 that she planned to take a break from social media after Christmas. She wrote on her Instagram that she was going on a little social media detox until the new year. The day after Christmas, she officially decided to chill. The move was made simply because she felt like taking a break from her phone, which I think we can all relate to. The day before announcing her hiatus, she wished her mother a happy birthday on Instagram, and of course, the break only lasted for a total of one month before she was back to social media. It's interesting that celebrities like this feel the need to tell us that they're taking a break instead of just, you know, 
taking a break. The world is not gonna collapse into ruins just because Camilla Cabello didn't respond to your DMs. Number two, Mena Masoud. Mena is the man who played the live action version of Aladdin in the 2019 remake starring Will Smith and Naomi Scott. The film received a ton of money and it clearly captured the hearts of audiences around the globe. However, earlier this year, he decided to delete his Twitter account after the online backlash he was receiving. For those who don't know, uh, Mina is from and went to school in Toronto, and the role of Aladdin was actually his first big role outside of school. So, of course, he jumped at that chance. Disney offers you a job, you take it. Unfortunately, the reception that this movie garnered caused him to be looked over when auditioning for other roles. Casting directors saw him as Aladdin rather than Mina. Despite appearing in small roles since, he hasn't been in another Disney project, and so far it's looking like Aladdin is not going to be getting a sequel anytime soon. The other side is that on Twitter, people were making fun of his role and decided that he was a bad actor or something. Um, those people are crazy! He was great as Aladdin and deserves a lot more credit. After seeing that The Little Mermaid made less money, but the plans for a sequel were in the works, he decided to take a break from social media for his mental health. And at number one, Shawn Mendes. TikTok can be a very addicting app. It is literally banned in some countries because it's known to stunt educational growth and distract people. Good job whoever made that, by the way. For Sean, that was basically the exact same situation that he was in in 2021 when he announced that he would be taking a breather from the social media platform. He said that TikTok is great, but he has extreme social media addiction, so he has to really balance himself out. Sean was also a child of Vine, the original TikTok that paved the way for a new TikTok. Sorry, I get a little nostalgic. That was a great app and started a lot of careers. While similar though, he admitted that TikTok and Vine are different, with TikTok being the far more advanced version. Towards the tail end of 2021, Sean told his Instagram followers that he was having some trouble adjusting to social media and felt that it might be a good idea to take some time off. But before he did, he told his fans how much he appreciated their kind words and well wishes. And he also acknowledged all the TikToks that he had seen of people having emotional reactions to his song, I Will Be Okay, and just wanted to let people know how proud he was to have achieved such a powerful and emotional reaction from people. Number 10, Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato was once a young actress working on the Disney Channel, being on the show Sunny with a Chance and featuring in the film Camp Rock alongside Joe Jonas. Following her time on Sunny with a Chance and the Camp Rock series, Demi shifted her focus towards her music career, but things quickly started going downhill. While on camera, she seemed sweet and innocent, but behind the scenes, she was becoming deeply engulfed in the world of substances and violence. Unfortunately, she suffered several breakdowns over the years, having to be hospitalized several times, culminating in an overdose a few years back. And despite almost passing away, she continued her partying lifestyle, and so far as we know, she still does to this day. Number 9, Ben Affleck. These days, Ben is known for being himself in movies and playing the role to a T, something that he was also known for at the beginning of his career. But there was a brief moment in between A and B when Ben was not doing okay. The Goodwill Hunting star was a good guy in the eyes of the media. He loved his brother, he loved Matt Damon, but it turns out that behind the scenes, he also loved No No Juice. It was after his time on the set of Goodwill Hunting that he decided to take hold of his issues. Initially, he just wanted to quit altogether, but in 2001, he he attended a rehabilitation program. This was when it was revealed that Ben had a hidden problem. He spent years going in and out of rehab. However, he has received nothing but support from his fans and the Hollywood community. These days, you can catch him on the big screen or snuggling up to his rekindled flame, Jennifer Lopez. Number eight, Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen had one of the most viewed talk shows of all time until she was canceled earlier this year. Despite appearing to be a bright and cheery host on screen, behind the scenes, she was in charge of an extreme toxic work environment. Eventually, an article was released containing testimonies from several former employees naming Ellen directly as one of the main antagonists. Ellen canceled herself by denying every single thing that she was being accused of, and instead of acknowledging her faults and missteps, she issued a half-hearted apology and was forced to cancel both herself and her show amid the controversy. Number seven, Bradley Cooper. The star of the Hangover trilogy was actually able to pull a lot of his character's life from his own experiences. While Bradley may be well known for his acting chops, he is not known for being too much of a party man. And it turns out it's because he put all of that in the past. Bradley made an appearance on the podcast Smartless, featuring Sean Hayes from Will and Grace, Jason Bateman from Ozark, and Will Arnett from Arrested Development. He got real with the gang.
gang as he was actually very close with Will Arnett for many years, claiming he was the one who encouraged and helped him to get sober. According to Bradley, when he first moved to Los Angeles, it felt like being thrown back into high school. Initially moving here for a role in the TV series Elias, he was eventually fired from the show. Being out of work while also dealing with an injury to his Achilles tendon, Bradley fell deep into no-no snow and juice that took over his every waking moment. The turnaround came in 2004 when he was having dinner with Will Arnett, who at the time was well known for mean humor as a stand-up. Will asked how Bradley felt about a dinner that they had a few nights prior with some folks that he had never met before. Believing the night went incredibly well, Will revealed that Bradley was actually incredibly rude. He was ignorant and he dropped a few swear words that I'm not allowed to say online. This was the moment that he realized he was not funny, he was just being a jerk. Bradley began attending meetings and writing his wrongs, and by the time he was in the Hangover series, he had been sober for years. When the story was first revealed, fans were thrilled to learn of his journey and how much he had overcame. Being someone who was exposed, but eh, it only made us like him more. Number six, Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel is known for a few things, family, action, being paid a million dollars to say I am Groot over and over again, lots of stuff. But there is one thing that many people did not know about Vin Diesel until the mid 2010s. Something so dark and mysterious that it is going to haunt your dreams. Vin Diesel plays Dungeons and Dragons. Now I know it's not like he has a no-no snow addiction or anything, but come on, that's pretty neat. While promoting his film, The Last Witch Hunter, Vin Diesel appeared on the YouTube channel Geek and Sundry, along with the epic voice actor and host of the D&D series critical role, Matthew Mercer. Marketing the episode as D and Diesel, Fast and Furious fans were taken back by the sudden geeky side of Vin. Well, according to his Fast co-star Michelle Rodriguez in 2019, he could not contain his nerdiness on set. Vin even even has a bunch of D&D themed tattoos on his body and he proudly shows them to anyone who asks. Fans were actually really happy to see this side of Vin. If they wanted to keep making episodes of D&D Diesel, I don't think anyone would be very upset about that. Number five, Justin Bieber. Justin became a massive success at a very young age. By the time he reached his teens, he had an album on the way, millions of fans, and some pretty wild accusations. Despite being a baby-faced boy with a big smile, it turned out that Justin had secretly been a very angry man behind the scenes. Around the time he was 17, Justin was photographed flipping off the paparazzi and he even got into a few physical altercations on multiple occasions. He had also developed a bad habit for no-no juice and a few other illicit substances, something he admitted to before he was the legal age to do anything, really. Several people just out and about started to notice his behavior shifting. Justin lacked self-awareness and apparently he tended to swear while he was on flights or if he was in restaurants, like a lot. Eventually his whole good guy thing wore thin and he was becoming a menace. He raced cars, he spit on his fans, and he even vomited on stage. By the time 2018 rolled around, his reputation was completely tarnished. He was eventually able to scrape together his career, he apologized for his actions, and nowadays he's too busy being married to be crazy. Nah, who are we kidding? He's nuts. Number four, Jesse Smollett. In January of 2019, famous actor Jesse Smollett walked into a Chicago police precinct and reported that he had just been the victim of a hate crime. He told the police that two strangers began shouting racial slurs while one was just yelling at him. The other was pouring the chemical bleach onto him before they both held him down and tied a rope around him. He claimed to have suffered severe rope burn and was physically ill from the experience. As we all know now, that isn't exactly what happened. The so-called strangers were actually two brothers who worked with Jesse on the set of the hit series Empire. According to inside sources, Jesse paid the brothers $3,500 each to help him stage the event, planning every single detail right down to the precinct visit. The proof that all of this was a ruse made up for publicity was the fact that the altercation conveniently took place directly in front of a security camera, and an investigation took place that found ample evidence that Smollett had set himself up. They found receipts for the ropes used during the altercation left in the assailant's home. Way to hide the evidence, boys. There was also security footage taken from the store where the brothers can be seen trying on and purchasing ski masks, gloves, and red hats, and I would pay anything to see that footage. It would be so fun. At the end of the day, Jesse was forced to serve 150 days in prison and pay the Chicago Police Department over $300,000 for wasting their time and resources. By the way, before you all get mad about how I'm pronouncing his name, I just want to remind you that he faked a hate crime. So, 
maybe focus on that. Number three, Tiger Woods. Tiger's secret life made headlines in 2009 when the news broke that he wasn't just some pro on the golf course, he was a cheater too. It turns out that the same year his son Charlie was born that he was having several affairs, including a full-on relationship with a woman named Rachel. Before the news broke, he was the most familiest of mans around. Tiger was photographed with his wife Ellen Nordegren on numerous occasions, and the couple could not have been happier. He was a golf pro, slowly making his way to the top. He had a loving wife at home and a growing family, but it wasn't enough. This dude needed to be sneaky and make problems for himself. His secret life was revealed after one of his many lovers leaked a series of texts proving the affair. Several more women came forward, and soon enough, Tiger was running away from Ellen as she chased him with his favorite nine iron. Tiger was forced to reveal his secret to the world, bringing shame on his career as a golfer and just a human being in general. Number two, George Michael. George is of course very open about his orientation these days and is never one to shy away from the topic, but unfortunately coming out was not his decision to make. In 1998, George was caught engaging in a physical activity with an undercover police officer in a public restroom. The only punishment received at the time was a $500 fine and 80 hours of community service. However, it was the public reaction and press coverage that really put the nail into his coffin. The headline, Zip Me Up Before You Go-Go, was on the Sun's front page. Following the incident, he was forced to out himself to the world. There had been rumors for years that George was gay, something that he did reveal to his sister and close friends by the time he was 19. But in 2007, he revealed that he decided not to come out to his parents, claiming the emotional toll the knowledge may have on them could be too much. According to George, keeping the truth hidden for so long took a toll on his mental health. When he finally revealed the truth, a massive weight was lifted. It may not have been his choice to reveal himself to the world, but he took it in strides and became the man that he is today. And number one, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnie was the king of the action scene for over 20 years. He first debuted in 1970 in Hercules in New York, and while his face was on display, his voice was dubbed over by another actor. Thus, the secret life. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's not the secret. It's actually his secret family that landed him on this list. As some may know, Arnold partook in a little affair with one of his housekeepers, Mildred Baina, while still married to his wife, Maria Shriver. Arnie and Maria have four children together, and they were not stoked to find out that they had a secret brother. Arnold was well aware that his son existed. Joseph is the youngest of his children. Born in 1997, well into his film career, Arnold was forced to hide his son and his lover. The last thing he wanted was for the world to surround his son and make growing up a nightmare. In fact, it took Arnold seven years before he realized that Joseph was actually his. Mildred decided to keep the pregnancy a secret and continued to work for Arnold, but eventually, it was obvious that Joseph was his. According to Arnold, he just noticed that Joseph was starting to look more and more like himself. And eventually everybody spoke and Arnold knew that Joseph was his. For a few years, he decided it would be safe to conceal the truth and take care of the family under the table. But when Joseph was in the eighth grade, someone close to the family leaked the information regarding both the affair and the existence of the unnamed secret son. Arnold was forced to come out and take the heat for the affair. While Joe and Arnie are close now, it took a long time to get to that place. Of course, his main family was shocked and a little bit upset that their dad had a whole other family that he didn't tell them about, but eh, who cares about them? Number 10, Shia LaBeouf. Shia's been a controversial celebrity over the years, becoming famous as one of the hardest people to work with in Hollywood history. Like many bad apples in LA, Shia got his start on the Disney Channel. At the turn of the century, Disney released a little show called The Even Stevens. The series followed the titular Stevens family with a focus on their kids, Ren and Louis, played by Christy Romano and Shia LaBeouf. The show is considered to be one of Disney's best, spanning three seasons and spawning an Even Stevens movie that is still one of the greatest pieces of cinema ever released. Following the show's end, Shia kept his acting career going strong, appearing in the much-loved classic Holes as the main character, Stanley Yelnets, but it wasn't until his casting in the live-action Transformers series that he began to descend into madness. Since 2007, Shia's behavior as both an actor and a person has been getting worse and worse. His fellow actors have reported that Shia takes takes method acting way too far, and he smells terrible on set. Not to mention the several public art displays that he's gifted to the world in the mid-2010s, and who could forget his passionate, motivational video where he told us that nothing was impossible and we could do it! Now, while he may still be working today, his reputation as a celebrity has certainly shifted from A-list to no thank you list. Number 9, Ashley Tisdale. Ashley was making a big name for herself in the Disney world after starring as candy girl Maddie on the sitcom Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Her character is considered to be one of the main reasons that this show even worked in the first place. So, it was surprising 
surprising to see her suddenly vanish from the acting world in the early 2010s, following the end of the High School Musical trilogy, as well as her time with the Sweet Life crew. After leaving Disney briefly to film a few raunchy comedies, including the fifth entry in the Scary Movie franchise, she disappeared and fans were confused. Where did Sharpay go? Well, it turns out she decided to focus on her personal life and tie the knot with musician Christopher French in 2014. After building up a solid foundation in her relationship, she shifted her focus to a different style of art in the form of cosmetics. Ashley launched the brand Illuminate Cosmetics as well as a wellness blog called Frenchie, which led to her personal care brand called Being French. While she may have lost her fame in the Disney sense, she's rebuilt a solid career for herself in other aspects and is actually set to make a small return to the acting world in a new series for CBS called Brutally Honest. Number 8. Mitchell Musso Mitch played Hannah Montana's best friend Oliver Oaken on the hit Disney sitcom Hannah Montana. When the show was coming to an end, he began dominating the Disney scene, being casted to voice Jeremy in Phineas and Ferb and playing one of the titular kings in Pair of Kings. And he was in something called Hatching Pete, which I think I watched, but I'm pretty sure I've repressed that memory. He seemed to be on track to following Demi Lovato as the next big thing to come from Disney. People think that about Demi Lovato, right? That's something. Unfortunately, his career came to a screeching halt in 2011 when he was arrested in Burbank, California. He neglected to slow down after being directed to by a policeman. The report said that the moment the window was rolled down, it was like a cloud of no-no juice just drop kicked them all in the nostrils. He blew a BAL of 0.8, which for those of you who don't know means that he was hammered. He was arrested, forced to participate in a no-no juice educational program, and charged with driving under the influence. Needless to say, it doesn't really go with Disney's vibe. So he was recasted on Pair of Kings, his prank show was cancelled, and he basically got blacklisted from Disney and the rest of Hollywood. He had also been attempting to start a music career at the time, but that just kind of nosedived into a toilet. If you'd like to find him these days, just go download one of his songs. He'll be the first to do it in a while, and I'm sure he'll track you down. Number 7. Orlando Brown That's So Raven was another series considered to be part of the golden years, aka the early 2000s of Disney. It starred Raven Simone as the titular character who has the ability to briefly see the future via unprompted visions. I swear, every time I explain the plot to an old Disney show, I just question who was on what when they pitched it. The show had a stellar supporting cast, including Raven's best friend Chelsea, Annalise Vanderpool, and Orlando Brown. Orlando's time as Eddie was received well with audiences, and he quickly became a fan favorite for not only his comedic abilities, but his dramatic abilities as well. After Raven wrapped up its final season, Orlando's career took a bit of a turn. Surprisingly, he was being casted as small side characters or secondary characters with minimal screen time in film and TV. In 2022, he appeared on Dr. Phil's talk show and opened up about his struggles mentally and financially. He also shocked audiences with his new look drenched in tattoos and sporting a pair of demon eye contacts. Unfortunately, it seems that Orlando has fallen victim to the darker side of Disney stars as he was arrested for a misdemeanor after an altercation with his brother. Number 6. Demi Lovato As most people know, Demi Lovato is known for sharing her opinions about the way the world functions and about how it affects her personally. She is also known to be on de no no stuff. Her descent into madness was slowly documented over over the years. Following her time on Sunny with a Chance and the Camp Rock series, Demi shifted her focus towards her music career, but things quickly started going downhill. Over the years, she went from Disney Channel Good Girl to Rock and Roll Raven, becoming deeply engulfed by the world of substances and violence. Unfortunately, she suffered several breakdowns over the years, having to be hospitalized several times, culminating in an overdose a few years ago. Despite almost passing away, she continued her partying lifestyle and still does to this day. It's hard to pinpoint exactly when Demi lost her fans and her career, but it's clear that things no longer have a chance of being remotely sunny. Number 5. Jennifer Stone The Wizards of Waverly Place co-star to Selena Gomez, Jennifer Stone, is another to lose their fame overnight, but it wasn't due to anything outlandish. Jennifer played the best friend of Selena Gomez's Alex Russo, Harper Finkel. Harper was a bubbly and eccentric character, usually wearing some kind of an elaborate dress made of something that really should be addressed. She played the role so well that the writers decided to make her and Alex live together in the later seasons, giving Stone as much screen time as possible. Following the cancellation of the show, she was swooped up by another channel that 
I'm not supposed to say the name of, but it rhymes with, oh wait, no, we can say that name now, so ha. She was swooped up by another channel and started working for Nickelodeon, casted as the babysitter slash narrator on the show, Dead Time Stories. Good old fashioned horror shows aimed at kids. Are you afraid of the dark, anybody? Huh? I miss those days. Unfortunately, that show seemed to be her last, as following the final season, she's remained fairly aloof from the public eye, appearing in small budget flicks, but mostly staying at home and taking care of her mental and physical health. Jennifer was diagnosed with diabetes in 2017 and has been participating in public outreach programs ever since. Go Finkel! Number 4. Brenda Song London Tipton was the daughter of the man behind the chain of Tipton Hotels in the sitcom Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Brenda Song accepted the role right after she was about to start college. Little did she know that the character would consume her life years. For the next six years, she appeared as London on both Zack and Cody and its reboot sequel and its reboot sequel series Sweet Life on Deck for a total of six seasons. Following the show's cancellation in 2011, Brenda starred in a few smaller roles in films like The Social Network, as well as TV roles in shows like Scandal, New Girl, and Superstore. Brenda's still active in the acting community, just in a smaller capacity as she traded in her Disney fame for family fortune, starting a family with her boyfriend and fellow child star Macaulay Culkin. Richie Rich and London Tipton have kids together and that's not a TV show? Brenda is slowly making her return to the mainstream, however, as she has recently starred in a few Netflix and Hulu series, including the comedy series Dollface, where Brenda claims to have rediscovered her passion for acting. Here's hoping that this inspires Disney to make another Wendy Wu movie. If you don't know Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior, that's that's fair. That's fair. Number three, Christy Romano. Christy was Disney's go-to girl in the early 2000s after breaking onto the scene starring as Ren Stevens in the legendary sitcom Even Stevens. While she may have starred alongside future Transformers star and maniac Shia LaBeouf, it was Christy that stole the show. She played the character effortlessly for three seasons before being tapped to lend her voice to another Disney icon. Christy provided the voice of the animated super spy Kim Possible. Following the cancellation of that series in 2011, Romano actually used her new fortune to attend film school and study what goes on behind the scenes. Romano has remained outside of the acting world since that time, apart from a starring role on Broadway as Belle in Beauty and the Beast in 2018. Her most recent venture is that of a YouTube blogger, now chronicling her day-to-day -day life as a mom. She may not be famous anymore, but she will certainly go down as one of the Disney Channel greats. Number 2. Lindsay Lohan Lindsay starred in over 60 TV spots and commercials for brands like Gap, Pizza Hut, and Jell-O when she was just a child. But she got her big break when Disney casted her to play two roles in the classic movie The Parent Trap, playing twin sisters Hallie and Annie, Hallie Parker and Annie James, who meet at a summer camp and discover that their parents split them up when they were kids. The twins then hatch a plot to get mom and dad back together, and it's a delightful little movie that still holds up. Her career only seemed to rise from there, starring in several cult classics like Freaky Friday, Mean Girls, and so many more. Unfortunately, her career took a step in the wrong direction when she was arrested in 2007 for driving under the influence of a controlled substance, for which she only spent 84 minutes in jail. Most movies are longer than that. Until 2022, her career was at an abrupt standstill, but she not only seems to be better mentally speaking, but she is now under contract with the streaming giant Netflix to release a few rom-com flicks over the next couple of years, so let's see how that goes. And at number one, Jake Paul. The headline for this one sounds like a Dr. Seuss title, Jake Paul looted them all. That's right, the famous YouTuber Jake Paul was briefly a Disney star in the early 2010s, appearing on a short-lived sitcom called Bizarre Varks. In 2020, Paul was involved in a looting that took place in Scottsdale, Arizona. A riot broke out in a mall, literally surrounded by police helicopters with lights and sirens, and Jake's reaction was, get the camera boys, let's go. Video footage was released by Paul himself, showcasing the events of the night. People were smashing windows and taking everything in sight, while Paul posted a statement on Twitter claiming that he had nothing to do with the riots and they were exclusively there as observers. However, this video did show Jake interviewing looters in the mall. Of course, groups were recognizing him immediately. Thankfully, the authorities stepped in to make their move on Jake, who told his fans, no cap, that's tear gas. How is that English? However, that was just the situation Disney needed to finally fire this dude. According to Disney, Jake's reckless public behavior was very well known to them at the time. There had been plans in place to simply address the issues and learn from it, but following the events in Scottsdale, they had no choice but to just cut ties with him entirely. He was charged with criminal trespassing, and while Jake's videos may still rack up millions of views online, he's certainly no celebrity anymore. His defense for the Scottsdale event was that he was documenting it as a quote public service. So 
if I videotape my friend stealing a Star Wars mug from Hot Topic, is that also a public service or is that it being a criminal? I don't, you tell me. Number 10, Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes first got us cracking laughing when she starred in the Nickelodeon series All That, which was the Saturday Night Live style kids show featuring various actors and sketches that honestly held up very well to this day. Eventually she was cast to star in her own sketch series named after herself, featuring former All That co-stars and newbies like Josh Peck, Drake Bell, and Taryn Killam. Amanda moved from Nickelodeon to the silver screen with massive success, starring in comedy hits like She's the Man, Easy A, and Hairspray. Her career seems to be skyrocketing, which is why it was so strange when in 2013 she announced on Twitter that she'd be taking a break from acting to focus on herself, claiming that being a celebrity just wasn't all it was cracked up to be. But it turns out that was not the case. You see, around the same time, she had been arrested for a DUI and was dealing with some serious legal drama. And it seems that much like many on this list, Amanda blew off some steam by just tweeting about all the people she hated. She called out everyone from Canadian treasure and rapper Drake to the president at the time. Barack Obama and his wife Michelle. She called people ugly, talentless, and she just kind of posted rant after rant with seemingly no reason. The rant combined with her reputation caused her career to instantly be cancelled. She was pulled from studio projects and has since spent her time trying to work on her mental health. Number 9. Will Smith Alright, you guys all know this one by now. In 2022, Chris Rock was hosting the 94th annual Oscar ceremony when he decided to make a little joke about Jada Pinkett Smith and her hair loss. Immediately following the joke, Rock stood in confusion as Will Smith made his way to the stage. He adjusted his jacket, took a firm, strong stance, and just smacked him right across the face. Initially, this was seen as a planned joke between the two, but Will then began shouting several times at Rock to keep his wife's name out of his flippin' mouth. Well, I didn't say flippin', but internet rules. Chris handled the situation, he kept his cool, he laughed it off for the cameras, and he brought out the next award presenter. Unfortunately, an hour later, Will Smith won the Oscar for Best Actor in a League because he played Richard Williams, who is the father of tennis superstars Venus and Serena Williams. During the speech, he gave a half-hearted apology for his actions before claiming that the whole thing was due to his months of portraying the father on set, leaving him with an extreme paternal sense to protect his family. But the world just watched Will Smith smack one of their favorite human beings live on the air, so you can imagine his career suffered a little bit. He has yet to make any new movies or star in anything other than his wife's talk show, which is also cancelled too, so there you go. Number 8, Lizzo. It was recently revealed that a lawsuit has been filed against the famous pop singer Lizzo, accusing her of creating a toxic work environment and mistreating her background dancers. The accusations range from fat shaming her crew to forcing them to eat strange fruit from strange places. One of the dancers, Crystal Davies, who is a part of the lawsuit, was fired for secretly recording a meeting between herself and Lizzo. The meeting was about the dancer's performance on stage recently and Lizzo's apparent dislike of the weight that she had been gaining, claiming that she was wasn't committing to her role. According to the plaintiffs, Lizzo made them work ridiculous hours, including up to 12 hour rehearsal days, and one of the dancers recounted an experience of having to use the washroom and being forced to do it in her pants while rehearsing. So she didn't lose any time. Like, come on Lizzo, if someone has to use the bathroom, let them go. It probably took longer to get that lady a new change of clothes than it would have taken her to just, you know, take five. When the news broke, the world collectively turned on Lizzo and believed every single word that these women were saying. Now, while Lizzo continues to deny the allegations, her career gets worse and worse. Several of her live stage shows have been cancelled, her music's been pulled from radio stations, and there is an investigation taking place, so not good for Liz! Number 7, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay stole our hearts in her Disney days, starring in movies like The Parent Trap and Get a Clue, and her career only seemed to be rising from there, being in several cult classics like Freaky Friday and Mean Girls as the main character Katie Heron. Unfortunately, her career took a bit of a step in the wrong direction when she was arrested in 2007 for driving under the influence of a controlled substance, for which she only served 84 minutes in jail. Yep, that's it, just 84 minutes. Despite this, the jail stint was enough to have her career ended in an instant. Any and all projects that had her name attached were rewritten or canned entirely, so no Herbie sequel for us. She then spent the next few years trying to scrape together something to keep her career going, starring in low budget horror movies like The Canyons or the comedy movies like Scary Movie 5, and I do mean comedy loosely. Not only was her acting poorly received, but the stunt had pegged her as a difficult and unpredictable 
approachable person. So no work for Lindsay. She made a recent comeback to the acting world in a significant role in a Netflix movie though, so here's hoping there might still be some hope for Lindsay. Number 6. Britney Spears In 2007, aka Britney's meltdown year, she famously posted a video of herself holding clippers in a barber's chair, missing, like, most of her hair. The person who cut her hair kept it and quickly attempted to auction it off for a million dollars, which sounds crazy, but you know there's some weirdos out there who'd call that a bargain. Following the shaving, she made her way to a tattoo parlor where the artist asked her what had happened to her face. After being swarmed by photographers at a gas station in LA, she went on a rampage wielding an umbrella and swinging it over and over again at one of the cars attempting to smash their windows. In fact, she also hurled expletives at anyone and everyone who had cameras eventually launching her umbrella towards the crowd. This was the main incident that landed her in a psychiatric hold. The entire night was captured by multiple people and the moment that the photos were released onto the world, her career was over. A court ruled in 2007 that she was unfit to control her own finances and granted that power instead to her father who was a no-no juice enthusiast with a sweet tooth for expensive things. Thankfully that has since ended and Britney seems just a little bit better than she once was. Number 5. Winona Ryder These days Winona is known as the mom from Stranger Things, but back in the day she was a rising star in the world of Hollywood, starring in several classic flicks over the years like Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands. But in 2001 she did something that tarnished her career for almost 18 years. Winona was out and about one day shopping at a posh store in Beverly Hills. Ooh, look at me, I'm getting so many fancy things. Video footage from that day shows Winona slowly gathering a pile of items, like literally wearing one of the hats that she's gonna steal. Thinking that she had pulled off the heist of the century, she began to walk out of the door when the manager stopped her, but noticing the massive pile of stuff in her hands that she most certainly did not pay for. She swiped over $5,000 worth of clothing, so I guess those Beetlejuice checks just ran out real fast. She was charged with felony grand theft and possession of a pharmaceutical, apparently holding some illegal antidepressants that anything might have had something to do with the situation. The moment the footage hit the news cycle, her career was over. She had already finished filming Mr. Deeds with Adam Sandler, which ended up being one of her last big roles, until stepping back into the spotlight in season one of the hit Netflix series, Stranger Things. Number four, Sharon Osbourne. Two years ago on the popular talk show, The Talk, host Cheryl Underwood and Sharon Osbourne began to discuss the topic of racism amongst the recent firing of Sharon's personal friend, Pierce Morgan from Good Morning Britain over a series of comments that he made towards the former Duchess of Sussex. Sharon went off and began aggressively defending her friend, asking Cheryl what Pierce said that made him a racist. And then she went on to say that she was being put in an electric chair, and due to her connection to Pierce, that she herself must be a racist. She went on to clarify that she did not support his comments per se, but she did support his right to free speech. But like he used that speech to say bad things, so maybe we don't support that. She then asked Cheryl over and over again how she could be racist. What did she do? What did she say? <laughs> Cheryl then signed off for a commercial break before Sharon let out some choice words. And when they returned, the tension almost seemed worse and the conversation just continued to escalate. Eventually, Underwood was able to get her point across and calm Sharon down, but the moment was put on air and Sharon was immediately cancelled. Her fans collectively cringed at the comments and begged that the studio would fire her from the show, which of course they did. Number 3. Roseanne Barr in the late 80s, Roseanne starred in a sitcom titled after herself, and she starred alongside Hollywood heavyweight John Goodman in a series that followed the couple's everyday lives as a working class family. The show aired for about 230 episodes and eventually got cancelled in the mid 90s, but it was revived in 2018 as the same wholesome content just for a new generation. But unfortunately for Roseanne, sitcom producers have Twitter, or, or X as it's called now, I don't know. Her show was quickly cancelled over a few few hours after Barr posted a tweet about Valerie Jarrett telling the world that she was the product of Planet of the Apes and a certain brotherhood having a baby. She later apologized for the tweets, but the damage was done. ABC Entertainment President Channing Dungy said in a statement that Roseanne's Twitter posts were abhorrent, repugnant, and inconsistent with their values. Again, values. These people really love their values at the studios. Barr actually defended her tweets saying that they were not racist, but they were in fact a joke. Hey Rosie, those can be the same thing, doesn't make it any better. In this instance, if she had just kept her comments to herself, she might have been okay, but the internet is instant and forever, so bye Rosie! Number 2. Millie Vanilli 
1989, German French dance pop group Milli Vanilli was on top of the world. The band had released its North American debut album, Girl You Know It's True, which climbed the Billboard charts and went six times platinum. The success also earned the group its first Grammy Award nomination and win for Best New Artists the following year. However, one Connecticut concert was all it took to shatter the phenomenon of Billy Vanilli. The same year, the group were set to record live on MTV at Lake Compens, a venue filled with 20,000 fans. As the group took to the stage to perform its seminal hit, Girl You Know It's True, there was an issue with a hard drive that caused the backing tracks to skip, jump, and repeat, exposing that Millie Vanilli had actually been lip syncing the song. The moment shook fans and was the exact instant that cancelled their careers for good. In fact, their music producer Frank Farian admitted that Fab Morvan and Rob Palatis never sang on their records ever. This of course caused the Grammys to revoke the award that the group had just won, while the crew tried to start a new career under a new name. Ultimately, that failed. And at number 1, Kanye West. Kanye West was a billionaire for a brief period in his life following his successful ventures in both fashion and music. At the start of 2019, he had a baby, he was happily married to Kim Kardashian, and he was about to drop some of the most racially fueled and homophobic tweets ever released into the world. Now, I'm not allowed to quote anything that he said because this video would get removed from the internet. We wouldn't want that, would we? Just to sum it up, his tweets were just the be- Just to sum it up, everything he said was horrible. Okay, just leave it at that. His tweets were just the beginning, as the aftermath would lead him to losing his fortune, his family, and his career. With just a few clicks of a keyboard, Kanye started the domino effect of his own demise. Any and all clothing brands created by Kanye, including his shoes Yeezys, were removed from shelves. Kanye's sponsorship from Adidas went into the toilet, as they wanted nothing to do with the most controversial man in the world. His wife Kim had already filed for a divorce, but she had then gone public with her relationship to SNL alumni Pete Davidson, which just must have felt like extra squeeze of lemon juice right into his open heart. Alright, number 10, Drake Bell, uh, Drake and Josh, a sitcom that gifted us with some incredible one-liners and caused anyone named Megan to have their lives changed forever. Drake Bell and Josh Peck starred as the titular Drake and Josh for four seasons before being cancelled in 2008. Following the cancellation, the three main cast members, they all went on to have steady work for a short while. Miranda Cosgrove, who played Megan, had some success in voiceover and was given her own series iCarly before dropping out of the acting world in 2015. Josh Peck starred in a few movies and TV shows here and there, but has only recently made a return to mainstream, appearing in the new Christopher Nolan film Oppenheimer. Drake has probably had the worst go of the crew when the show was cancelled. His roles were limited to straight to video flicks and voiceovers starring as Spider-Man in the animated Ultimate Spider-Man series. The worst performance of all though was when Nickelodeon thought it would be a great idea to make a live action Fairly Odd Parents movie, I actually remember this, starring Drake as Timmy Turner. Needless to say his status as a celebrity was gone at that point, but the nail was driven into the coffin in 2021 when Drake was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service after it was revealed he'd been being a young fan for years, so if you see him in an orange jumpsuit cleaning graffiti off the wall, you'll know why. Alright, Jamie Lynn Spears at her number 9 spot. Jamie starred as the title character Zoe in the hit series Zoe 101 alongside fellow entry on this list, Matthew Underwood. Her time on the show was well received and made many fans excited about what she may film next. When the show was eventually cancelled in 2008, Jamie was at the center of a massive media rumor. The theory was that Zoe 101 was abruptly cancelled due to Jamie becoming pregnant with her daughter. The reality was that never happened. Jamie did get pregnant, but it was six months after filming had wrapped on the series, so the show was cancelled by the executives at Nickelodeon. For some reason, they felt the show was done and needed to be replaced by something new and more fun. And Jamie actually did have plans to continue her career on the silver screen, but like we said, six months into looking for work, a new job opportunity opened up and it would be the most challenging of all, the role of a mother. She decided to move back to Mississippi and gave up her career in film to raise her kid and be a star to, you know, the household. 
Now it's not all missed opportunities, however, as Jamie is still remembered fondly as a musician, releasing several songs before 2010, and has recently been popping up at several country and rock festivals to lend her voice to the crowd, and many fans will be happy to know that not only there will be a Zoe 101 flick released on Paramount Plus this fall, but it stars the entire original cast, and a trailer is already out for us to enjoy. Perfect. All right, number eight, Jake Paul. Jake Paul looted them all. News headline or Dr. Seuss title, I don't know, that's right. The famous YouTuber Jake Paul was briefly a Disney star in the early 2010s, appearing on a short-lived sitcom called Bizarre Bark. And in 2020, Paul was involved in a looting that took place in Scottsdale, Arizona. A riot broke out in a mall, literally surrounded by police helicopters with lights and sirens. And Jake's reaction had people scrambling for their phones and cameras, but video footage was released by Paul himself showcasing the events of the night. People were smashing windows and taking everything in sight. And while Paul posted a statement on Twitter claiming he had nothing to do with the riots and they were exclusively kind of observers of the event. But the video did show Jake intervening with looters in the mall. And of course, groups were recognizing him almost immediately. And thankfully, the authorities stepped in to make their move on Jake, who told his fans, no cap, that's tear gas, bro. Okay. Thank you. However, that was just the situation Disney needed to kind of finally fire the guy according to Disney and his reckless public behavior was very well known to them at the time and there had been plans in place to simply address the issue and learn but the following events in Scottsdale, well, kind of had no choice to cut ties with the performer immediately. He was charged with criminal trespassing and his defense for the Scottsdale event was that he was documenting it as a quote public service. If I videotape my friend stealing a Star Wars mug from Hot Topic, is that also a public service? I don't know. All right, number seven, Mitchell Musso. Mitch played Hannah Montana's best friend, Oliver Oaken, on the hit Disney sitcom Hannah Montana. When the show was coming to an end, he began dominating the Disney scene. He was cast to voice Jeremy and Phineas and Ferb, playing one of the Ritual Kings and Pair of Kings, and something called Hatching Pete, which I vaguely remember watching, but this one I'm pretty sure I've kind of repressed. Now, he seems to be on track to follow Demi Lovato as the next big thing to come from Disney, and people think that about Demi Lovato. Right. Fortunately, his career came to a screeching halt in 2011 when he was arrested in Burbank, California. He neglected to slow down after being directed to kind of do so by police and pull over. The report said the moment the window was rolled down, it was like a cloud of something just drop kicked them in the nostrils and he blew a BAL of 0.8, which for those who don't know means he was kind of gone. He was also forced to participate in a adult juice educational program and charged with driving under the influence. Kind of standard, but needless to say, it doesn't really go with Disney's vibe. So he was recast on Pair of Kings, his prank show, it was canceled, and he was basically blacklisted from Disney entirely. He had also been attempting to start a music career, but that also just kind of nosedived into the toilet. Now, if you'd like to find Mitchell these days, just go download one of his old songs. You'll be the first to do in a while, and I'm sure he'll find you. All right, at number six, we have Orlando Brown. That's So Raven, another series considered to be a part of the golden years, also known as the early 2000s of Disney, starred Raven Simone as the titular character who had the ability to briefly see the future via unprompted visions. I swear every time I explain a plot to an old Disney show, I question who was on what when they were pitched. The show had a stellar supporting cast, including Raven's best friend, Chelsea and Eddie, played by Annalise Vanderpaul and Orlando Brown. Orlando's time as Eddie was received well with audiences, and he quickly became a fan favorite for not only his comedic abilities, but dramatic ability as well. Now, after Raven wrapped up its final season, Orlando's career, it took a bit of a turn. Surprisingly, he was being cast as a small side character or secondary characters with minimal screen time, so he never really got a lead after the show. In 2022, he appeared on Dr. Phil's talk show and opened up about his struggles mentally and financially. He also shocked audiences with his new look, drenched in tattoos and sporting a pair of demon eye contacts. Now, unfortunately, it seems that Orlando has fallen victim to the darker side of Disney, and he was arrested for a misdemeanor as well after an altercation with his brother. All right, number five, Brenda Song, London Tipton. She was the daughter of the man behind the chains of Tipton Hotels in the sitcom Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Brenda Song accepted the role right as she was about to start college. Little did she know the character would consume her life for the next six years. 
She appeared as London on both Zack and Cody, and its reboot sequel, The Sweet Life on Deck, for a total of six seasons following the show's cancellation in 2011. Miranda starred in a few smaller roles in films like The Social Network, as well as TV shows in like Scandal, uh, New Girl, and Superstore. Now Brenda, she's still active in the acting community, just in smaller, just in a smaller capacity, as she's traded in her Disney fame for family fortune, starting a family with her boyfriend and fellow child star, Macaulay Culkin. Now Richie Rich and London Tipton have a child together, and that's not a show, or not even a reality show. Brenda is slowly making her return to the mainstream as well. However, she has recently starred in a few Netflix and Hulu series, including the comedy series Dollface, where Brenda claims to have rediscovered her passion for acting. And here's hoping that inspires Disney to make another Wendy Wu movie, maybe? If you don't know Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior, you, you need to look into that. <laughs> All right, number four, Cal Mitchell. Welcome to Good Burger, home of Good Burger. Can I take your order? The sentence that always blasts into my skull when I talk about Cal Mitchell. Cal was another young buck to be cast on the hit show, All That, with Amanda Bynes and future best friend Kenan Thompson. Much like Amanda, Cal was asked to participate in a spin off of All That, only this time a straight up sitcom rather than more of a sketch show. And the show, Kenan and Cal, starring Cal and Kenan Thompson, is one of my favorite that Disney Channel produced. And these two had incredible chemistry and so good that Nickelodeon had a movie centered around them, Good Burger, that has actually aged pretty well. And his character never really took off after that, with him only appearing in that sitcom world and in a minimal capacity then. But his loss of fame was kind of self-inflicted as his career on screen slowed down. His family life has been nothing but up. He decided to stay at home and focused on building a relationship with his wife and rapper Asia Lee. And they are currently expecting a second child sometime this year. We're hoping that when the kids are a little older, Kel can get some time off and maybe make a return to the acting world. Now, there was a rumor of a Good Burger 2 being in the works, so let's start that now. Hashtag Good Burger 2, make it a trend. <laughs> All right, number three, Josh Peck. Josh made up the second half of the series Drake and Josh alongside musician and bad boy Drake Bell. Josh got his start on the Amanda Bynes show alongside Amanda Bynes, participating in several classic sketches before eventually moving on to his own sitcom that is still considered to be one of the best Nickelodeon shows ever produced. Josh's time on the show, it was wonderful. He delivered a zany, big hearted kind of brother vibe that went really well with Drake's rock and roll, I need love on the inside. Um, kind of character and following the cancellation of the show, Josh went on to star in several silver screen showings like the underrated comedy Drill Bit Taylor starring Owen Wilson and the reboot of Red Dawn from 2012 alongside Chris Hemsworth. His career dipped in quality following that performance though. Josh was starting to seem like another Nickelodeon kid who was growing up to be rambunctious and wild instead of taking his job seriously. He lended his voice though to several characters over the years, including various roles in the Ice Age films, but has mainly stuck to small TV roles or independent flicks and he did maintain a following. However, as of a few years ago, he started posting TikToks as well. Those received millions of views. And recently Josh has popped up on the cast list of Christopher Nolan's upcoming historical drama Oppenheimer. Perhaps this will mark his return to the acting world if it's in a movie like that. Now, he may be on the road to Oscar territory. All right, number two, Amanda Bynes. Amanda, she got her lucky break on the Nickelodeon sketch series, All That. Essentially, the Nickelodeon version of late night sketch show Saturday Night Live. It sported a stellar cast, including current SNL cast member Kenan Thompson, Drake Bell, and Lori Beth Denberg. Eventually, the producer decided to offer Amanda her own series. Her success only grew from there. The Amanda Bynes show became one of Nickelodeon's most watched series, and she was picked up by several studios to star in non-Nickelodeon projects like She's the Man, Easy A, and Amanda took a hiatus, however, in 2013 following a very public breakdown. In 2018, she told fans exactly what caused this breakdown. Now, according to Amanda, she became addicted to the devil's lettuce at a young age. While it wasn't an addiction at first, more roles came more pressure and a kind of way to cope. And this eventually led her to more drastic substances. She also believed that she wasn't pretty enough anymore to be in films. And she took Adderall as a way to help her stay thin. In 2013, Amanda posted a series of bizarre tweets where she seemed to be insulting almost everyone she could think of. She called the former president, Barack Obama, ugly, clearly referring a character from the Amanda show, but still. She was arrested and placed under psychiatric hold as she was accused of several hit and run incidents. And 
was officially charged with reckless endangerment and criminal possession of some interesting herbs and spices. Her parents then placed her under a conservatorship until 2022, when she stood in front of a judge, healthier and better than ever, ready to move on with her life. The judge then said, okay, Amanda is free to go. Good luck, Amanda, then. Hey, there's a million kids who grew up with you, and we've got your back. All right, let's end things off with number one, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay is a Disney star who actually never really appeared in a sitcom or TV series. She got her start acting at just the age of three, starring in over 60 TV spots and commercials for brands like Gap, Pizza Hut, and Jell-O. She got her big break when Disney cast her to play two roles in the classic Disney family comedy, The Parent Trap. She played twin sisters, Hallie Parker and Annie James, who randomly met at a summer camp and discover their parents split up when they were babies following a divorce. The twins then hatch a plot to get mom and dad back together, and it's delightful, one of my favorites. Her career, though, only seemed to rise from there, starring in several cult classics like Freaky Friday, with Jamie Lee Curtis and Mean Girls as the main character Katie Heron. Unfortunately, her career took a step in the wrong direction when she was arrested in 2007 for driving under the influence of a controlled substance for which she served 84 minutes in jail. Yep, minutes. Some people spend years in jail. Lindsay, she got a warning there. Until 2022, her career um, kind of came to an abrupt standstill, but she not only seems to be better mentally, um, she's also under contract with the streaming giant Netflix to release a few rom-com flicks over the next couple years. So maybe her and Adam Sandler will make a Netflix multiverse. Now, I don't know how I'd feel about that, but we'll see where it goes. 